Okay, so you've got your router, you got your stuff plugged into your router, and this cable over here goes to the modem. So you got all of everything plugged into your router, and all the ports are full. So you've got no other options. So how do you add more wired devices to your router? So you got all these plugged in. Maybe you got different computers or whatnot. So you've got a couple options to add more wired devices to your network. The first option that I'm gonna go over is going to be if you already own an old router that you don't use anymore, maybe it's in the closet, maybe it's being maybe it's in storage somewhere, maybe you just have it in a drawer and you're not using it, you can actually use that other router to add more ports so you can plug more physical devices in. So let me show you how to do that real quick. I have another router over here. So what I'm gonna do with this, let's just say this is my old router. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna plug the power in and turn it on. And I want to reset, the, uh, reset all the settings to default factory settings. So on this router, there's a little reset button here. So you wanna plug it in to power so it's turned on and make sure it's working. And then there's a reset button. You just wanna hold that button in for like at least 10 seconds. But I mean, if you wanna be safe or if it's not working for you, maybe hold it in for 20 seconds or something like that. But basically you wanna hold that button in different routers work different. So for example, let's see, I got another router over here. For this router, it works different. There's a little reset you see in there. I have to get a pen or a pencil or something. Uh, I don't have one around me, but you see how there's like a hole with a button inside the hole? You just gotta get a pin or a pen or a pencil or something sharp and press that button in. Again, you, you some of them work where you just press it real quick and others work where, you, again, you have to hold it in for like 10 seconds or 20 seconds or something like that. Basically, all we're doing is we're making sure that this, this spare router does not have any settings on it that are going to mess us up. We want everything to be default because that makes it so easy. So once that's done, the router's turned on and it's in default factory settings, you want to uh, log into this router so you can either plug in to the port back here or you can connect the Wi-Fi and you're gonna want to log in to the interface of this router now if you are unaware of how to do that uh, you might want to look at your manual or look it up online I'm not gonna explain that process in this video but you want to log into this router and you want to disable DHCP that's a, an important step on here the only setting you're changing is you're disabling DHCP. That's the only thing you really have to do. And then, now that you've disabled DHCP, and now that it's at default factory settings other than you disabled DHCP, now you can take one of these cables, you can get a new cable or whatever, and let's just say this blue one. You can take one of these cables and you plug it from the LAN port on this router that you already have and plug the other end into a LAN port on this other router. I'm getting good at doing this with one hand. All right, so the point, the thing that makes a difference, you don't, you see how like four of the ports are the same and the one is different? The one says internet, you don't want to use the internet port. Over on your main router, you have the, the, it's either internet or it's WAN, and that one goes to your modem. Any other router you do this with, that you connect to this one, you're never gonna use this internet port on any other router. So you can just go ahead and put a piece of tape over that. You're never gonna use, it's, it's easy to tell because that port, the internet port is usually just different. It's usually separate or it's a different color or it's labeled differently. So that one you will never use. Put a piece of tape over it. You, you connect the cable from this router to this router. 
And now you have three more ports over here. You can add three more devices. And if you want, you can even take a cable and plug it in there and do the same thing to this router. If you want to add a third router, you plug the other end to, into a LAN port over here, put a piece of tape over this. Again, you're never going to use this port. So you can connect a cable from your second router to your third router. And now you have, not only do you have, since this one's being used, you have two more ports right here. And this one's being used, you have three more ports right there, that's three more ports. But that only works, that works great. But it only works if you have routers lying around. The benefit is if you have this router lying around, then you have extra uh, LAN ports and you also have an extra Wi-Fi network. So I mean, that that is like, it's all cool and it's, it works if you have extra router. But if you don't have an extra router, there's actually, if, you're, if you have to go buy something because you don't have a router lying around, this is what I would recommend you do. If you're going to buy something, you would want to go to the store and buy something called a switch. This is an Ethernet, a 5 port gigabit Ethernet unmanaged switch. The fact that it's unmanaged is the important part we're looking for because unmanaged means there's no settings, there's no passwords, there's no configurations, there's nothing you have to do. All you do is plug it in and it works. There's, there, there, there's nothing to configure on this. It's just a switch, there's no Wi-Fi on it, there's no DHCP, there's nothing to disable. It's just a dumb device. You just plug stuff into it and it just works. So, how I would use this, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the box and we'll be right back. So this is what it looks like. It kind of looks like a router. It looks like a little mini Wi-Fi router or something, but this is a switch. It's an unmanaged switch. And I just want to make sure I emphasize it's unmanaged. There's, there's, a, there's managed switches. Ugh. There's managed switches and there's also unmanaged switches. Managed switches are a little more advanced. They have settings you can change and they have things to configure inside of them. But unmanaged switches not only are they cheaper they're less expensive not only that but there is nothing to configure on these this one cost me under $25 it was like $23.95 at Walmart plus tax so if you can imagine you don't want to buy another router if all you need is more wired devices you don't want to buy another router because that would just be a waste I mean you you can spend $75 or more on a router, or you could just buy this switch, an unmanaged switch, for under 25 bucks, and it does basically the same thing. The difference between the switch and the router is the switch, like I said, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it doesn't have any services, it doesn't do anything other than provide you with ports. That's all it does. And you notice there's no, there's no port that's different, they're all the same, there's no different color because they all do the same thing so what you need to do is you plug this switch you plug it into power I'm not actually gonna plug it in because it doesn't it doesn't do anything it lights up when something's plugged into it you plug it into power then you can plug one of these cables from this router over to your switch And now, anything you plug into the switch can now access this router and the internet from this router and it can access all the machines that are also plugged into this router. Um, if you have like a, a share server, like a, some kind of storage, you can plug that into this. And then if you connect to Wi-Fi on this router with your phone or whatever, you can still use your phone to access the Wi-Fi on this router and then access whatever is plugged into this switch. So now you have, you take away one port on here so that you can go over here and add four more ports. So just don't think about, I have four ports on my router and I have four ports on, and I have five ports on my switch. Just remember you take one port away when you uh, 
connect them with the cable. So you have a five port switch gives you four more ports because one of them has to go to the router and then also you're, you're taking one port away. So if, you're, if you're, all your ports are full and you need, uh, let's say you need, I don't know, five more ports or whatever, just remember you can't count one of these because now you only have three ports on your router to plug stuff in and you have four over here. So that's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that allows you seven devices instead of four. Now, when you look at the instructions, you can see the thing that comes with this. There are some that have more ports. You can't. You don't just have to buy one of these. You'll see Netgear has a five port and an eight port gigabit switch unmanaged. Again, unmanaged is the, is the important part. That's the part that's gonna save you money. Since it's unmanaged, it costs way less than a managed switch. So you can either buy a switch with more ports in it, or you can just buy multiple switches. Like the Walmart I went to, where I bought this one, they didn't have the bigger one, they only had this one. So I could have bought like multiples of these. And if you want, you can plug another cable into another one of these ports, and plug the other end into another switch if you want, for more devices. So the benefits of the unmanaged switch are, not only do you not have to configure anything, it's just so simple. It's just a dumb device. You don't have to configure it, but also it's a lot cheaper than buying another router or buying a managed switch. Because you might go to, I don't know, Best Buy or somewhere and they might have all kinds of switches for you to choose from and some are way more expensive and like, why does this have the same, the same number of ports but it's like twice the price? The, the important part is that it's unmanaged. If you want to, if, if you don't know what you're looking for, you can ask the sales associate or whatever. I need an unmanaged switch. It doesn't matter that this is a Netgear router and this is a Netgear switch. The brand, it doesn't, has no effect on anything. All that matters, like a switch is a switch. It doesn't matter what the brand is. So I hope that helped you out. Um, on how to add more wired devices to your network if you used all the ports on your router. If this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.